All right, everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Today's video must add for week 14 of the fantasy hockey season. Looking at seven players to add for the upcoming week here. Looking at which teams play the most games and which teams play the least games here. Teams that play four games this week, you have the Bruins, the Dallas Stars, Minnesota Wild, New York Rangers, uh, Philadelphia Flyers, Toronto Maple Leafs, and the Vancouver Canucks. So a decent amount of teams playing four games. Some of those, some of those teams, although they play four games, might be hard to find valuable players on the waiver wire considering a lot of those teams are at the top of the table right now and then looking at a couple of teams that play just two games this week you got the devils and hurricanes which could definitely hurt some people so if you're playing against guys who are loaded on those two teams which is very possible uh that, that'll be that'll be a better matchup for you and then the last team that plays two games is columbus all right let's get into today's video with seven players to add all right so the first guy we're going to be adding is blake coleman on the calgary flames has the ability to play center and right wing in Yahoo Hockey Fantasy Leagues. This guy, 59% rostered. So definitely, I like to mention a couple players off the top of the videos that people can add in 10 to 12 player leagues. Blake Coleman will more than likely be available. The Flames play three games this week against the Senators, Coyotes, and Golden Knights. Pretty solid matchups, to be honest. And even the Sens and the Coyotes, or Sens and Golden Knights, excuse me, both in the top six when it comes to shots allowed per game over the last five games played. Something weird going on in Vegas right now, but defensively, they're definitely not playing that great. And with Aiden Hill out, the goaltending hasn't been that great, relying on Logan Thompson and J.J. Patera. So apart from Gensel and Nylander last week as well, um, and McDavid actually, Coleman had the fourth highest expected goals for total over his last five games played. To show for it, he had five goals, two assists, 15 shots on goal. So some really solid play we've seen recently from Blake, Blake Coleman here. And I think the biggest thing here is his line switch up. You know, Backlund and Coleman have always been paired together since really last year, and Ryan Huska didn't want to change any part of that. He added Huberto to that line, which at first was working really well, but since then hasn't really been doing the job. So Mangiopane back on that line with those two guys, and it's really been helping. They have a expected goals for percentage of 59% and expected goals for per 60 of four, which actually leads the Calgary Flames uh, together. They've played about 18 games uh, as a unit there. So his average ice time too is actually one thing you kind of want to look at here is roughly about 16 minutes so far for the season, but he hasn't played less than 17 minutes since December 12th and has played over 18 minutes in four of his last six games. So we're seeing him be trusted a little bit more, especially since he's scoring so much, you know, they have no choice but to keep him out on the ice. With the Flames offense starting to get going, Going here, you know, they've they've scored at least three goals in seven of the last eight games as well. So definitely some good things going Calgary's way right now. And one of those guys that's benefiting from that is Blake Coleman. So try to add him this week. The one defenseman we're going to be looking to add this week, this is one of two Boston Bruins players we're going to be adding, and that's Hampus Lindholm. 48% rostered right now. The only D I have on my list for this upcoming week. And the biggest reason for that, they play four games, the Bruins. They play the Avalanche, Coyotes, Golden Knights, and Blues. Three pretty solid matchups right there, uh, apart from really Colorado, who's still pretty good defensively and obviously has Yorgiev in net. You know, the Coyotes, Golden Knights, and Blues are all great matchups, games that the Bruins should be able to dominate in terms of shot attempt share and even winning those games as well. So Lindholm, four points his last five games, has started to pick it up a little bit more here in the assist department at least, points in three straight games as well. He's playing a ton, most of his career on the season, playing 24 minutes per game in his, one of their more recent games against the Penguins. He ended up playing 30 minutes in that game. The biggest knock here, and I think you might be able to, you know, if you pick him up, you might be able to be lucky and get a goal from Hampus Lindholm this week, and that is his shooting percentage is is below 2% right now, and he has a career shooting percentage of about 6%, so there's definitely some wiggle room for him to score there. He doesn't shoot the puck a ton, but has been shooting a little bit more. 55 shots on the season, along with 55 blocks on the season as well, so good numbers to look at there. Hampus Lindholm, definitely a defenseman you should be looking to add for Week 14. All right, so one of the best streaming options, I think, for this week is Jake DeBrusque on the Boston and Bruins as well. 41% rostered right now has the ability to play left wing and right wing in Yahoo Fantasy Hockey League, so that's obviously a big thing to note there. As I mentioned with Lindholm, the Bruins play four games this week against Colorado, Arizona, St. Louis, and uh, Vegas. So those are obviously pretty decent matchups that I think Jake DeBrus can exploit. And playing on that second line right now with Brad Marchand and Charlie Coyle, two of the guys that are creating a ton of offense uh, and playing a really solid as a, as a unit too. So good to see that these guys are starting to get some points. And Jake DeBrusk been one of the better players on the Bruins over the past two weeks and definitely since the new year as well. He's on a five-game point streak and has three goals and seven points in his last five games. Uh, and as he continues to play about 17 minutes per game, which is his most ice time he's played all also this year, so Lindholm and DeBrusque both getting career highs in minutes on the ice here, so obviously good things to see there. Jim Montgomery obviously trusting these two players. As I mentioned before, going into Jake DeBrusque, one of my favorite streaming options for the week, considering the matchups and that he plays four games. 
All right, so now we get into the guys that are less than 30% rostered. And the first guy, I've talked about him before on this show when he was pretty much like 5% rostered. And the fact that he's only 27% rostered still to this point is pretty wild. And that's Gustav Nyquist on the Nashville Predators. The Preds play three games this week against the Ducks, the Stars, and the Islanders. Two great matchups playing against Anaheim and the Islanders. Two teams that rank in the bottom three of the NHL in shots against and also expected goals against as well. The Ducks have been getting absolutely peppered uh, with shots more recently. The Leafs, you know, just set a franchise record, or sorry, Lucas Dostal set a franchise record for 55 saves against the Toronto Maple Leafs when I believe they had 57 shots or something like that. So I don't think we'll see the same performance maybe from Nashville, but it just goes to show kind of how bad and poor this defensive unit is for the Anaheim Ducks. But Gustav Nyquist been playing really solid hockey recently, tied eighth most in points in the NHL over his last Last five games played with four goals and four assists, adding up to eight points there. Plays in all the right spots as well. Plays on that first line with Ryan O'Reilly and Philip Forsberg. Also playing on that first power play line. And then also getting some second penalty kill time as well. Also with Ryan O'Reilly. So they've obviously built some decent chemistry, you know, if Andrew Burnett continue to play these two guys together. The first line of O'Reilly, Forsberg, and Nyquist, one of the better lines on Nashville for sure, if not the best line when expected goals for a percentage of 53%, so very solid. They clearly dictate the offensive pace for this Nashville Predators team. Nashville continue to be one of the better offensive teams in the NHL too, especially with Saros in the back end. That helps them even more, but top six in expected goals for this season. Gustav Nyquist, one of the contributors to that as well, so definitely try to get Gustav Nyquist. Crazy that this guy is still 27% possible. All right, looking at a guy on the Toronto Maple Leafs that you should add this week, and that's Tyler Bertuzzi, 21% rostered right now, playing at the left wing spot on that second line with John Tavares and William Nylander. The Leafs also play four games this week against the Sharks, Islanders, Avalanche, and Red Wings. Some great matchups for the Leafs, which is one of the biggest reasons why I actually do like Tyler Bertuzzi this week. He's still rocking a pretty low shooting percentage compared to his career average. You know, right now on the season, about 8% shooting percentage when his career average has always been around 13 to 14%. And playing on a line with Tavares and Nylander, you'd think, you know, his shooting percentage wouldn't be that low, or he wouldn't lack in the assist department and have only 10 assists. So considering his shooting percentage and the lack of assists, I think he's just been a little bit unlucky because he's always been in the top six on this Leafs team who continues to score a lot of goals as well. So I think we've seen him recently get better too. Maybe not to the level of where he's going to be, you know, a firm add on every single fantasy hockey team, but seven points in his last nine games is his best stretch of the season or since being a Toronto Maple Leaf. So with the easy matchups for Toronto this week, I think Tyler Bertuzzi is a great streamer. All right, so this guy I talked about before the season started and I'm back in on Jonathan Drew. I 13 percent rostered the guys finally starting to rack up some points and some goals here for this Colorado Avalanche team the Avalanche only play three games this week but I still think he's a great ad and a guy that could definitely help you for the next couple weeks for a reason I will mention at the end here but Jonathan Drouin has had a resurgence absolutely he's been awesome 14 points his last 15 games played including five goals as well has already uh, quadrupled his goal total last year from from the Montreal Canadiens so that's obviously really good to see but it's it's good to see that Jared Bednar is finally trusting Jonathan Drouin here. Uh, you know, his last three games, he's played so many minutes. You know, looking at 23, 21, and 25 minutes in that game against the Dallas Stars where he scored two and Colorado came back and won 5-4 in overtime. I think the main reason for his resurgence, he's back on that top line with Nathan McKinnon and Miko Ranton. Hard to not be really contributing at a really high rate when playing with those two players 100%. And he's also playing on that first power play now, so it's finally starting to click. Who knows when Lekkonen comes back, how it'll affect him. But right now, you have to ride the hot hand with Jonathan Duran. He's starting to finally look again like the Halifax Mooseheads Jonathan Duran we saw in years past. All right, the last guy we're going to be adding this week is Warren Fogel on the Edmonton Oilers. 4% rostered, so less than 5% rostered. There's one other player I mentioned in the outro that you should keep your eye on just in case he does start to go off coming back from injury. But Fogel on a 6 game, or sorry, excuse me, the Oilers on a six game win streak here. He's averaging closer to 15 minutes per game uh, compared to his 13 minutes on the ice over the course of the season. So starting to play a little bit more as the Oilers start to win here. He has three goals and eight points uh, over that same stretch as well. Four of his last six games, he's also had at least four shots on goal. So that's obviously a great thing to see. And I think the biggest reason for that is the line he's currently playing on with Leon Dreisettle and Ryan McLeod. You know, Ryan McLeod's a great player, but Leon Dreisettle is going to be looking for Warren Fogle to be the guy who's going to be scoring the goals not really Ryan McLeod necessarily so he's now played they've now played nine games together and are working with a 55% goals for percentage um, that's obviously really great and their expected goals for per 60 is 4.9 which is second best on the team only behind McDavid's line who's playing with Ryan Nugent Hopkins 
what a terrible advice that was to <laughs> drop Ryan Nugent Hopkins. It might have been good for that one week where you could have won that week, but now obviously Nuge playing with McDavid is just an absolute stud and will continue to for the rest of the season. But Warren Fogle is the guy they're going to be focusing on for this week, considering how well he's been playing in the line he's on now. So the Oil play three games this week against the Blackhawks, Red Wings, and Canadians. All great matchups with terrible defensive units and really shaky goaltending, except for maybe Montreal, probably the best of those three, but still in general, some really good matchups that you can take advantage of and I would definitely try to add Warren Fogle 4% rostered he's going to be available in pretty much every single week all right guys thank you for tuning in let me know what you thought of week 14 must add of the fantasy hockey season the one player I'm going to tell you guys to keep your eye on it's Max Pacioretty finally back in the Washington Capitals lineup has played one game to this point hasn't really showed much but you know if the Washington Capitals start to score more goals and he starts to produce he's definitely going to be a candidate or someone you could be adding so definitely keep your eye on this week as the Capitals continue to play more games and he starts to get his feet a little bit more wet here but be sure to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video